Well, this is not a good sign. This is not uh, our RV. This is a friend of mine stopped by to, to visit with us, and we found something that uh, shouldn't be. So we've got all this oil coming out around the rim. I suspect it's the gasket here on the axle. Uh, while we're at it, uh, we're going to go ahead and drain the differential. This is different from ours. I've got the W24 that has the Dana S130 differential. This is a workhorse chassis, a W22, which has the Dana S150 which is kind of strange because the 150 is much larger than the 130, uh, but, but it supports a little less weight. It's just the way it's in its design. So I'm going to crawl under here, and we're going to uh, drain this oil out and see about pulling this axle out and uh, see what kind of project we get into with this. All right, let me take a little light on the subject. Here we go. All right, so here's the uh, oil fill plug, and I took it out already. I was kind of surprised. There is no magnet on this. I don't like that. I might see if you can get him a, another plug that actually has a magnet on it. But we'll take the bottom one out. Maybe it's got the magnet on it. So, and it's about an inch low. I put my finger in there. There's no oil, but it's, it's also, it's black as coal. So, simple enough, all you, just, all you need is, is a half inch ratchet or a half inch breaker bar if it's really tight. So, I'm gonna loosen up this bottom plug. See if there's a magnet on it, and we'll get it draining. Okay, let's get to draining and see what, what we see when we do this. Do you see some like thread lock material on there? Come on out, come on out. There it goes. Okay, I see a magnet on this part. I see a little fuzz. Nothing real big. We'll clean it up better and see what we find. Well, I'm, I'm going to warn you, you need to be ready. When that oil comes out, it comes out fast. So we, we got it all caught, put in this container here. Remember, you're going to be draining out 12 quarts at least. But one thing I'm not liking is I'm seeing some metal on here. There's no great big chunks, but I don't know. I don't like it, but I don't know how many miles is on this one. I'll ask the owner and see. But uh, next thing we got to do is see about pulling this axle out and uh, find that leak. Oh, I should point out to you, if you want to take this cap off here, there's some little notches you can see, little flat spots you can get in there with a the screwdriver, give it a twist, and pop that off. And once you pop that off, you got a place to put all your parts. Ain't that nice planning ahead. So I'm going to get all these nuts off here and uh, see if we can't ease out that axle. Okay, so what you're going to need to pull these nuts off is just a 7 8 inch socket, half inch drive. Um, but one thing to remember is with this W22 chassis, the parking brake actually gr grabs hold of the drive shaft. It's not grabbing hold of the, the brakes or the wheel assembly, so the moment you pull the axle out, the thing could roll away. Because then the differential would start spinning. So we've got the jacks down, so, so it can't go nowhere. Hello Francine, that's you helping me again? That cat's always here to help. So, and I've got all the nuts loose and... Uh, try it. There it goes. A little bit. Well, it's going to take. Two, it's gonna be two-hander. I budgeted a little bit. Let's get her loose. And before I pull this axle out, I put my little indent indentation right there. Because I always like to put it back the way I found it. Because that axle's been in that spot its whole life since 2004. So, uh... <coughs> So all we gotta do is slide her out, and yeah, we got a gasket. I believe has failed. Yep, that's where we're leaking. All right. Well, another thing I found out: those nuts weren't very tight. I didn't have to grunt very much at all to break those free. So that's probably another issue. In fact, it's probably a wise thing put on your maintenance schedule to retorque those. I'll get the specs here shortly. Find out what the specs are supposed to be, and I'll, I'll go check the other side. Let me turn some light on for you. Look closely. I mean, there's, it's got reflection, but there's nothing left of that gasket. No wonder it was leaking. I suspect that axle has probably been on there slightly loose and actually probably shifting back and forth, causing that to, to do that. That is just super thin material. My goodness. Yeah, we definitely should get a new gasket for it. 
Well, interesting. Bags look good. Don't see no metal. It's a good thing. But if this is this side is this bad, we probably need to do the other side too. That's how what happens, isn't it? You start a little project and it just grows and grows. All right, so I showed you the other side of the axle. Now we're on the driver's side. And before I took the, I, I took the cap off and look, you can already see the gaskets blowed out of it also. So before I started taking this in loose, I was just curious about the torque on these bolts. Because remember these bolts, I believe it calls for 170 to 190 foot pounds. So I got my torque wrench, put it on this nut, and we'll see what it, go, what it takes to break it loose. Let me try to get, get my hand here situated. Stand up here. Yeah, let's see what it takes to break it loose. Oh, golly. What was that? Only 40 foot pounds took to break that loose. Oh, nothing. Let's try another one. No wonder these things are blowing gaskets. All right. Try another socket here. Gosh, that one was loose too. Well, that's not good at all. Well, I guess this goes to show. We need to add this to our maintenance item and start checking torque on these bolts. Let's see what this one comes to. Yep, about 40 foot pounds are coming loose. And they're supposed to be torqued up there. Right here, the right here book shows you they're supposed to be torqued up to 170. So, so if you've got a workhorse chassis, you need to put that on your to do list and check torque now. I'll go a little bit further here so we determine. Because evidently they got three different torque specs depending on the threaded bolt that they use on these different Dana rear ends. Because you got the, I know you got the Dana S150 and the Dana S130. So I know this is a W22 has the Dana S150 in it, and my W24 has a Dana S130, which it seems backward. The lower number fits the bigger chassis. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to somebody, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna take all these out and uh, see about getting getting this fixed. All right, you can see we got it off on the passenger side now. You see what the, what the gasket has done. Now this one wasn't, wasn't leaking yet, but just starting to. You can see the oil stain was just starting to appear. But it would not have been, well, I guess another reason why it wasn't leaking so much is because it was about an inch low on oil. So I'm sure that, that was contributing to the fact that it, it already leaked a bunch out. So that's why you check your differential oil. It can be an expensive repair if that thing fails. So let me get all this old material off and uh, get this replaced. You can see how thin this gasket material is. I mean, it is super thin. You barely call it a gasket, but I guess they do. That's why a lot of times you put them back together without a gasket using the Ultra Gray. That's what I did on the W24 five or six years ago and it's held up fine. So that's what we're going to be doing on this one because we can't source the gasket anywhere locally. Uh, okay, something to watch for. because These little slivers of gasket like to hang around. So you look, might look like this, it looks fine. If you look under here, you see like a little piece right there. You want to make sure you get those off and out of the way because I found several little pieces on, on the bottom side. You want to get rid of all that stuff. Make sure you have a perfectly clean, flat surface to mount this together with. So I'm going to finish cleaning, cleaning this up really good, get it good and dry, and uh, we'll apply some of this uh, ultra gray uh, gasket maker and uh, put this together. Okay, now it's time to decide what torque we're going to torque these at. Because if you look at the, the service manual here, for the S135 or the S150 Dana transaxle. It gives you three different torque specifications depending on what size uh, stud you have. Half inch 20, 5 eighths 18, or 3 quarters 16. So you gotta decide, okay, what have I got? Well, here's a little trick. So uh, options, okay, half inch. So we've got a half inch wrench. And that don't fit over it. We know that's not it. We have an option of, of 3 quarter. Well, yeah, 3 quarters is way too big. But 5 eighths, there you go just right. But then if you want to double check yourself for, to make sure, it also tells you the thread pitch. So it's 5 8 18 threads per inch. These little handy thread checkers, you know, these come in tap and die sets. So here's here's the checker that is 18 threads per inch. You can lay in on it and it fits the threads perfectly. So that, that way I know for certain I'm going by the correct spec. 5 8 18 threads per inch, 170 to 190 foot-pounds. 
So now I'm going to apply some of the uh, ultra gray sealant. Here it is, it's ultra gray. I've used this on my W24 five or six years ago and it's worked just fine. So I'm, uh, but the trick to it, they do tell you, is to put it on there, let it skim over, uh, hand, just hand tighten it, let it sit for an hour before you apply the final torque. Give it time to skim over and uh, firm up a little bit before you really put the squeeze on it. So let's get that applied. Now here's another tip using uh, this brake cleaner, parts cleaner. So you can spray that on the surface and that way it'll dry real quick and get rid of all the oily residue because you want a nice clean dry surface. Okay, you can see I've got my uh, Permatex applied to the axle. I'm going to carefully slide it up in that hole and get this thing put back together and torque back up. Alright, we got the axle ready to roll in here. We can see you got the Permatex applied. Remember, I made my little dot up here where I know where 12 o'clock position is. I'm handing my phone to my cameraman and just kind of guide it in. You have to tilt down a little bit to get it started. Then you got to get another tilt to get in those splines lined up. All right, that went. That's all there is. Easy peasy. All we're going to do is put our nuts on there, put them on just finger tight for now. Let it sit for about an hour before we apply the final torque. Give that uh, gasket material time to uh, skim over. Alright, so I've, we've got this about wrapped up, got it all torqued up. Now my torque wrench only went to, to 150, so I had to go a little bit, a little bit past that to uh, make sure I hit the mark at you know, 170 to, to 190. But I got them all, all good and tight, so that shouldn't be an issue no more. Now I just gotta crawl under the RV and uh, top off, refill the differential. Because if you're gonna start this process, I'd recommend just you know draining the differential anyway. I'm sure it probably needs to be changed because the oil in this was just was black as coal. But well, let me show you. So this is the oil that come out of the differential. This RV has 40,000 miles, so I'm suspecting it's never been changed. Like a lot of differentials. Like I've said before, they are the forgotten oil change. So uh, let's crawl under there and uh, put in some fresh, clean oil. Okay, so while we're on this under end talking about axles, there's something else I want to point out that's very important. If you ever have a bearing failure on, on the end of these hubs, I've talked to a fellow one time, he had a horrible experience. His, his bearing failed. He went and had a new bearing installed. He went about 100 miles down the road and it, it failed. So what happens is when you put new bearings on the end of these hubs, if you don't tilt the axle, you won't get oil to them because they, they, they can't get, look, well, let me show you here. That's how the differential is. You got, you got separate hubs out here and they, they, they kind of dish down. You put new bearings in them, the only way you get this oil to them is you got to tilt the axle up. It's like you got, so if you put this bearing in new, you got to tilt this up like that so the oil will drain into the hub. If you put the bearing on the other side, you got to do the same thing. you got to tilt it up. I illustrated this in my brake job I did about five years ago. I did a complete brake job on my W24. But uh, it's an important thing to remember because you just slip, slip bearings in there and you, you just assume by filling this up, you're good to go. You're not. you got to raise up both wheels about eight inches to get that oil to roll out there in, into, the, into the hub. Something to keep in mind. So before I put this drain plug back in and finish this oil change on this Dana 150. I want to get a close-up view of all this metal fuzz. Now I'm assuming this is 40,000 miles. I don't know if this has ever been changed or not, to tell you the truth. As, as black as it was, I would expect it's probably the original oil in it. Um, so I took a little piece of copper here so I could kind of roll this stuff around. It's got all that, just that kind of fuzz to it bunch of tiny little, little shavings, which I guess maybe that's considered somewhat normal. But there was two little pieces I found right here, which uh, kind of like, like looks like what I found in mine a while back. I had uh, one piece kind of curled that way, so maybe it's somewhat of a no normal occurrence. Makes me feel a little bit better about mine if I see it in his also. See how they're kind of rolled? Don't know for sure where they're coming from, but... He's only got two pieces like that. I think he's going to be all right. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and uh, see what it looks like. All right, I got it cleaned up pretty good. Got all that fuzz off of it. 
best way to do it, I was using this part spray cleaner, and then I'd blast it with the air from the air hose. Kind of the best way to get it good and clean, because you just keep wiping and wiping and ne never get it off because of that magnet hanging on to all that fuzz. And you can see what a mess I made here trying to wipe it off. And you just got those two little metal flakes left. Because remember, this didn't come out of my RV. This came out of my buddy Tim. He drove in from Arizona, had a couple things to fix, so we're getting him all lined up, and this is one of them. Another one is we've got a leaky, an axle leak. We're dealing with that too, changing out the, uh, the oh, we're taking, taking the axles out and getting that leak fixed. Because with an RV, it's always something, isn't it? Ah. Okay, let's talk about the oil and the, and the proper oil to use. So here's straight from a Dana's website from a PDF file I found. And it talks about, you know, look, look at the oil change intervals. You know, 120,000 or one year. Uh, same way, 100,000 or one year, depending on the type of oil and stuff you got. But there is one oil they say if you use this, there's the, the spec for it, 256 Revision C, that you can go up to five years on that. But you gotta know most of these RVs run around. That, that oil has been run for years and years, never checked, never changed. Now we got chainsaws. Okay, maybe it'll be quiet for a second. I'm trying to, I'm gonna hold this. You can do a screenshot here if you want these specs on this oil so you can get the, the proper oil for your Dana. All right, it's time to put some fresh oil on this Dana 150 rear end. And just look how black that is. I talk, I think I mentioned earlier we had like 40,000 miles on it. Actually, it's a little over 50,000. He he bought the RV, it had 40,000, so he's put some miles on it since then. But but I don't know, it doesn't look like that has ever been changed. So kind of makes you wonder what does your differential look like? Now, I know I, I drained mine a few videos back. I remember I found a little piece of metal when I was just checking the oil and I went ahead and drained it. And then, but my oil after two years, I mean, it looked like honey. It just was, it looked, looked pristine. So, um, so we're gonna get this filled up. Gonna get my torque wrench out, torque the drain plug back where it belongs. And you can see I got, got it. The drain plug really nice and clean. There's no metal on it now, like there was before. And we gotta try to get that oil in here and not and not make a mess. We've got these gallon jugs here. We're putting back a full synthetic 75140. You don't have to go synthetic if you don't want to. Um, there's my piece of paper. Hang on. I mean, you can you can easily uh, Google the Dana oil specifications. to tell you the different uh, options you have. Uh, uh, my buddy here, Tim, he decided to go with a full, full synthetic, but it, it can be a little pricey, especially for this size we're in, because it takes so much with being 12 quarts. That hurts a little bit, but, but it's your RV, so you got to take care of it. So let's get to draining this oil. Or not draining it, filling it back up. Okay, you can see how I'm accomplishing this. Got my jug up here, got a hose, just give it a little squeeze, and letting it flow in. Even one-handed, I'm I'm getting this accomplished. Almost got it full. I'm on my uh, third gallon now. So the last step, it's all full now. Put us in three gallons, got all that done. Last step, just like the book says, torque the drain plug up to 35 to 45 foot pounds. Focused. Not focusing too good, is it? There we go. A little, a little over 40 pounds. We got that part done. I guess this project is over. So now there's no excuse. You can crawl into your RV, check your differential. If it looks anything like this, or if it's been a couple years, go ahead and get it changed. Because you sure don't want a differential failure. That will cost you dearly. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye. So I'm editing this video, and I wanted to add a PS to it. Um, I talked to my buddy. Uh, he's now uh, in northern Wisconsin. He's put about 800 miles on his RV, and he says everything's good and dry. It hasn't leaked a drop. But uh, I was wanting to point out, you know, you can get the gasket. At the time, we was in a time crunch. We didn't have time to wait for the gasket. So, um, but if you need a gasket, Rousel's got them right there's the part number. Remember, this gasket is only works on the Dana S150, which fits the um, Workhorse W20 and W22. I do not think this will work on the W24, being it's a different, uh, different designed um, differential. But if you got the time, of course, go ahead and get the gasket. But I was confident because 
Um, many years ago when I did my brake job, I pulled my axles out and had to do the same thing and use Permatex the same way. And it worked just fine. So anyway, there's your update and looks like everything's rolling good for him. And again, thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Bye.